Hi everyone, my name is Amanda Witasik, and you're about to see the epic trip I took in the Exumas with my family and friends. Starting in Nassau, we headed south on this beautiful 62-foot catamaran. Our captain, Kino, was born and raised in the Bahamas, so we got the best tour guide in town. And our chef, Sylvia, made us delicious meals that fueled us for our daily adventures. On our first day, we left Palm Cay Marina and cruised for about two and a half hours before we reached Allen's Key, where we swam and took the paddleboard to visit the iguanas and feed them some grapes. Then we snorkeled at the plane wreck off Norman's Key, which was surrounded by beautiful fish, and you could swim through the hull, which was split in half. We finally anchored for the night at Shroud's Key and Luke, Sherry, Sophie, and I jumped off the front of the boat and swam to shore where we discovered a well on the island. We did so many things in one day, and this was just the start. Our next stop was Wardrick Wells. We saw our first sea turtle and their shark, but like Captain Kino said, we still hadn't seen nothing yet. Some of us swam and some of us took the dinghy to shore, where we saw the skeleton of a sperm whale. Then we hiked on a trail to explore the island. The views were just spectacular, and Luke discovered his inner island boy, considering he walked on sharp coral and rocks barefoot. Yeah, we, we all thought he was crazy. Then we snorkeled in what was called the Underwater Aquarium. I think we can all agree that that was the strongest current we've ever swam in. We anchored at Compass Gate and got a glimpse of what was coming the next day, closed off by a beautiful pink sunset. When it comes to taking adventure head on, we took this day to the extreme. There are times when we tell ourselves that nothing can stop us, that we can take on the challenge or conquer our fear, but once we get there, we're like, you know what, I'm good. Let, we can save this for another day. But today was different. Back, back, back. As soon as Captain Kino started banging the knife on the cutting table, the shark swarmed really close to the dock, knowing that food was coming. It made getting in a little scarier, and you can see Sophia has hang a little bit there, but they're truly just really cute and curious creatures that nudged up against you and bumped into you as Kino threw fish into the water. Rather than feeling slimy and slippery, they actually felt like 
very worn down sandpaper, but still smooth to the touch. A little hard to describe. It really was an incredible experience, and we were all in awe about what was happening before our own eyes. Once we finished, the sharks went back to taking a nap, and we moved on to our next adventure. We went to the Thunderball Grotto in Staniel Key, known for the James Bond movie Thunderball being filmed there. While it was low tide, you could swim through a narrow opening on the side of the island that led to a big hidden cavern. Large holes at the top lit up the place and made it perfect for snorkeling. There were smaller, darker caverns attached to the main one that we explored, and Captain Kino told us stories about how he came here with his friends when they were little, and the fond memories he has that reminded him of the pleasures of growing up on the islands. We swam through a hole on the side and climbed up to the top where we were about to do something absolutely crazy. When you're inside the cavern, you tell yourself, oh, that's not so bad. But then you look down from the top and you're like, what was I thinking? Luke was the first one to go. You got it. <laughs> and then it was my turn. I was breathing hard and shaking and I looked down, which was definitely a mistake, but I finally built up the courage to step off. My wrist strap attached to the GoPro actually broke off due to the impact of the jump. And I'll be honest, the jump was not pretty. It hurt when you hit the water, and it was probably the worst wedgie I've ever gotten. But then came Sophia. And then John. Then Sherry. Hey! Then my dad. Woo! And finally my mom. And of course, we can't forget about Captain Kino. We all went back to the boat, still pretty stunned about what we had just done. We anchored at Black Point to visit some of the locals and walk around. Captain Kino was very happy and full of pride to show us around the island. He told us the meaning behind the colors of the Bohemian flag. The blue was for the beautiful water, the yellow for the beautiful sun, and the black for the beautiful Bohemian people. But most importantly, we had to get the best coconut bread on the planet which we all definitely enjoyed while watching the sunset. On our fourth day, it was cloudy and it rained in the morning, which was actually nice considering it cooled things down and allowed for some shade from the hot sun. We sailed to Little Farmer's Key, where we met some beautiful sea turtles and snorkeled around. The locals were feeding them the conch wheat from the shells they catch. We even tried some ourselves as one of the locals prepared us what they considered a treat, a mango conch salad. It was a little on the spicy side, but Luke really enjoyed it. From there, we began sailing back north and took our respective maps before we reached Pig Beach. Now these were so dang adorable. They came right up to us and you just had to give them a little fist bump on their nose for familiarization. We fed them fruits, veggies, and bread. Of course, the babies were the cutest, and Sophia almost didn't leave the island because she became friends with all of them.
the most crystal blue and peaceful sandbar we've ever been to. You could just float back, grab a drink, and all of your thoughts washed away. We walked around the island that was just a swim away, and as you can see, my dad strapped the beer on the back of his hat in order to swim there. Luke found a sea cucumber. We all went hunting for sand dollars, and as low tide came, Sophia and Luke were army crawling in the shallow water. I don't really know what their end goal was, but it was funny to watch. Then we did some more snorkeling in a really neat sea garden with huge purple fans. We were in some rough water, but there was this wave of warmth underwater that you could see in the form of ripples just as you would in the air when the road is too hot. on board.